guys, it's Double Wide 6, and today I'm going to be taking you through the process of winterizing my pool. As you can see, I have all the chemicals balanced. I really didn't have to do anything. I just uh, checked them with my test kit, and everything's good. So we're going to go ahead and uh, pull the ladders, and I have my pool robot in there cleaning up one last time. The next step is to pump the pool down and we're going to put it below the skimmers and also below the return jets. So to pump down the pool what we're going to do is we're going to move our multi-valve over to the waste position and we're going to turn on our pump and I've set this up so it pumps up there's some baseballs that are drying kind of in the attic in the shed. And then it goes underground and it runs to my French drain where the gutters take the water. So that way it doesn't damage my lawn. I have a whole video on how I set that up if you're interested. It's as simple as this. You're going to pump down your pool, then you're going to blow air through the pipes. We'll add a little bit of marine antifreeze, and what that'll do is it's insurance in case water leaks through the plug. It won't be able to freeze because there's antifreeze in there. And whatever you do, don't close your pool with the water being scummy. Get yourself a good test kit, take care of your water, get it in good shape before you close it. By the way, the pool shed's been working out great. This is my first season where I'm putting all my pool chairs and umbrellas and equipment in here. I did a little work to the inside too. I had a little bit of uh, pallet wood laying around. So I went through and just kind of trimmed this out a little bit to hold in the insulation. Give it a bit of uh, a finished look in here. So I'm pretty happy with this look. Kind of looks like a sauna. This small air compressor is plenty strong. I'm going to set it to 30 PSI and blow out the lines. Here's what we need to do. First thing we're going to do is we're going to take this thing off of waste and we're putting it on filter. And I pulled the automatic timer stops off. I just stored them in here in the timer case. And the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to pull the plugs off our pump here. You can pull one of these out. We're going to let some water drain through and air. I pulled out the plugs and now the water is draining through my relief slit that I cut in the concrete. The water comes through the slit and just drains out right here. You can see it running. I ended up pulling out both plugs, give it a little air and drain both sides of the pump here and now I have a quarter inch NPT fitting and I'm just gonna hand tighten that right in here it's a perfect fit for the pump and that's where we're gonna hook up our air hose and we're gonna start pushing air through the pool now before I do that I'm gonna turn off my main drains on the bottom that'll give me a little more air pressure so I can blow air through the other pipes so I hooked up the uh, air line and now it's pushing water out of the skimmers. This is the shallow end skimmer. So what I'm going to do, since there's air blowing out both of these, um, I'm just going to turn off the deep end skimmer and really force the air through this one. We're back at the shallow skimmer and what we're going to do is take a cup try and pull as much water out of here as we can. Now that we've forced the water out of the shallow skimmer, we're going to turn off this valve, but I'm going to need two hands to do it. Okay, I turned off the shallow valve, and I also unplugged my air hose to give everything a break particularly my compressor and we're keeping this simple all you do is pump air through it you figure out where the air is coming out whether it's a return or it's a skimmer 
and then what you do is you push the air through and push the water out you turn off the valve and now we're gonna go plug the other end we're back at the skimmer there was a little bit of water in here and when I closed off the valve it ran down the hole it doesn't matter because what we're gonna do is put antifreeze in here I use about half a gallon or so the antifreeze will mix with any water and all it is is insurance so if a little bit of water gets in through the plug it won't freeze for this skimmer I'm using a plug because the threads in here are slightly uh, cross threaded so I put a plug in there and I tighten it and then to prevent it from freezing I put in a sand bottle which I need to find the skimmer box has the potential to freeze and if water freezes in there your plastic will crack and it'll be a very expensive repair so since I'm putting a plug in here I'm going to take a two liter bottle with sand in it and just set that in there then if the ice freezes the bottle will take that expansion instead of the plastic around the surrounding area area you can also use a gizmo I use this on my other skimmer as I said this hole the threads are slightly uh, stripped the gizmo you should use Teflon tape and a rubber o-ring here very important and this works the same way when the ice compacts in there this will squeeze in and protect the outside of the skimmer box I also as a preventative measure put an old pool noodle in here I just set it in there like that that'll compress if there's ice in there and then finally my third bit of insurance is to put about a third of a bottle of antifreeze in here and that'll mix with any water that settles in there and that's how I handle my skimmers here's a last look the black plug is what I inserted in there the other plug is just always down in there and you can see the antifreeze you just want to check for any bubbles if you see bubbles then you know that plugs not sealed properly so I'm gonna put in my sand bottle because things are looking good cap this thing off and this side's done you want to remember to pop off your weird door skimmer flap now what I'm gonna be doing is blowing out the return jets and I have the air compressor blowing pressure through and these are two jets that are actually tied together and what I have is one capped off slightly and I blow that water through it and now I'm removing the cap from the second one and I'm blowing all the water out of there at this point I'm going to turn off the valve it's a handy job to have an extra helper here so the valves all shut off and now I'm using a curved funnel with a hose to pour about half a gallon of antifreeze in here and then finally cap it off and you got to do that for each of the returns here's a look at my steps I have three return jets here and I'm blowing air through them so water and air is coming out of the lines and as there's air coming out I'm capping them off all three are tied together and I'm just trying to force out any remaining air and it, you can see it coming out the top there and I'm going to now turn off the air pressure and lock the valve and I'm just going to add a little bit of antifreeze in here so that it's safe at this point all the valves are winterized and closed except for the main drain which is the floor drains on the deep end they're both tied together there's one valve here we're gonna open that up and we're gonna pump some air through there and we're gonna wait till we see bubbles coming out the drains 
trying to force the water or yeah the water and air bubbles out the main drain see how we see lots of bubbles now all we have to do is create an airlock and we do that by turning off this valve Okay, we're all closed up. I'm gonna pull out the pump plugs and my quarter MPT fitting. And I like to put these in the basket for next year. We're gonna pull off our gauge. You can put a plug in here, but my tank is indoors, so I don't need a plug there. And the uh, valve here, we're going to put on close. And what that's doing is it opens the valve and it lets our water that I have in this pipe going up run back down through. I'm removing the sight glass. And I usually pull the plug. And I throw this in the skimmer basket. We'll let that drain for a couple days. Put all that in there. You want to make sure your power's off. I already removed the lugs there. So we'll open up our box. We're going to turn off our breakers. And that pretty much concludes it. You want to make sure that your salt water generator is turned off. And um, my salt water generator, uh, I usually loosen up the fittings just a half a turn in case there's any freezing, particularly on this back end and this little cup I like to take off. But now I'm in a building, so it doesn't really matter, I guess. But I'll I'll do that anyhow. And uh, Last thing that I would need to do is just pull my safety cover. So we'll go ahead and get some help and try and get that pulled. Anyhow, I'm Double Wide Six. I got a whole bunch of pool videos. I'll put some links to the products I used in this video and the test kit that I like to use for my pool. And uh, if you're interested in uh, pool house videos, uh, I have those too. So you can check out my channel. Thanks for watching, guys. And have a great football season.